I don't think it's intentional by any means. I think there is a really large training gap. Um, if skin of color is underrepresented in the textbooks and lectures, and you're taught on how conditions present in lighter skin, when you treat patients with lighter skin, you're gonna be able to recognize that condition. However, in darker skin, if you've never seen it before, you're not gonna be able to recognize it. And unfortunately, it becomes a disservice in treatment. In a lot of skin conditions where the hallmark feature is redness, which is a hallmark of inflammation, um, disease activity and darker skin, it's gonna be harder to appreciate the redness because the red might look darker or purple or dusty or brown. So for example, rosacea, extremely common where the hallmark is redness and flushing and blood vessels dilating. Rosacea still occurs in darker skin, but it looks different. It's not gonna look like a typical red rosacea as in lighter skin. Um, and so oftentimes it's often mistaken as acne, but it's actually rosacea. In the treatment of rosacea, we use very, very mild products because strong products can cause irritation and worsen rosacea. In acne, we tend to use a little bit more aggressive products that might lead to irritation and inflammation. So in darker skin, if you're using harsh products on rosacea, you can paradoxically, one, make it worse. And in dark skin, when you contribute to inflammation, you create a cycle of hyperpigmentation. I think overall in dermatology and cosmetics, we've seen an increase in patients wanting cosmetic procedures and patients having the time to have downtime to do particular cosmetic procedures such as chemical peels and laser resurfacing. With the increase in those procedures, we're which do have a risk of scarring and hyperpigmentation and darker skin or in untrained hands. Um, I've dealt with a lot of complications uh, from hyperpigmentation and scarring.